Democrats in the streets going wild. Democrats gone wild. That's the topic of today's Bold and Blunt, and I'm your host, Cheryl Chumley, giving you a Christian conservative look at today's news, politics, culture, and events. Look around what is happening in this nation. I'll tell you what's happening. Democrats gone wild. They're taking a playbook from the Girls Gone Wild videos of yesteryear, and they're taking to the streets, demanding, demanding their rights, their rights, their rights to abort. Abort little baby fetuses up until the ninth month even. That's what Democrats ultimately want. And before I get into that, I want to give a quick shout out to edify.app backslash podcast. That is the place to go if you are looking for faith-based podcasts. And I'm happy to say that Bold and Blunt is among Edify's lineup. So check out Bold and Blunt at Edify. Check out all the other podcasts offered there and download a few. Download many, many few if you like and make sure and subscribe to Bold and Blunt. If not there, at least at WashingtonTimes.com or wherever fine podcasts are offered. And speaking of offerings, I want to mention I have a brand new book out called Lockdown, The Socialist Plan to Take Away Your Freedom. And let me tell you, there is no pre-pandemic normalcy in the minds of the far left, in the minds of the globalists, in the minds of Anthony Fauci and all his sheep-like followers. So check out what Lockdown has to say about the behind-scenes discussions that went on among the globalist camps of government, including the Democrat Party, in order to use fear to justify lockdowns. And more importantly, check out what Lockdown has to say about what's coming down the road in terms of continuing clamps on individual American freedoms. It may give you nightmares, but it will, it will make the globalists howl. They don't want you to read this. They don't want you to know about it. All right, let's talk about the Democrat Party. Listen to this, WUSA Channel 9 News. Rain did not stop dozens of pro-choice protesters from taking to the quiet streets of Chevy Chase, Maryland to make one thing clear. You don't get to take away my bodily autonomy and enjoy your Saturday night at home. So take that, Supreme Court justices. We're coming to your homes. We're going to stand in the street and and we're going to make your lives miserable. Why? Because you're doing your job and we can't take that. We can't stand having law and order and constitutional principles enforced in this country. That is your Democrat party of today. You can do one or the other. First step, Justice Brett Kavanaugh's home, created by Montgomery County police officers. Then they headed over to Chief Justice John Roberts' residence with a similar message. Hands off our bodies, hands off our bodies. They don't want to call it hands off our babies because, of course, that would be too truthful. So they sidestep that little fact and say hands off our bodies as if anybody is really putting hands on their bodies. Why does the left always have to use lies and deception in order to get their points across? I can answer that. They have no points. They have no principles. They have nothing upon which to stand except lies and distractions from their true agendas. This isn't about a woman's choice. This isn't about a woman's free choice to have or not have babies. If it were about that, then the argument would be over abstaining from sex because the ultimate choice in deciding whether or not to have a baby comes down to the question of whether or not to have sex. Let's make the necessary caveat for criminal behaviors, rape, right? In those instances, a woman who's raped or the circumstance, the victim of incest, which is also rape, does not have a choice of whether or not to become pregnant That choice was stolen from her. But by and large, the abortions performed in America are not performed 
on women or girls who have been raped or have been victims of incest, which again is another way of saying rape. By and large, the abortions in America are coming because of, oops, mistake, didn't use birth control, or oops, mistake, my birth control failed, or oops, I don't need birth control, I can always get an abortion type of viewpoints. Yes, there are people out there who actually think that, that abortion is just another form of birth control. And if you don't believe me, look to the streets right now. It's these crazy, lunatic women and girls screaming things like, well, like this. Listen to them yourself. Abortion saves lives. Abortion saves lives. <laughs> See what I did there? I said lies instead of lives. I guess that's a true Freudian slip, right? Because this is what the Democrats are doing with this whole leaking of the Supreme Court memo on Roe v. Wade. Let's look at this in perspective for a second with a little bit more cooler head approach. First off, this is a leaked draft memo, so it's not even complete. So all this outrage is preliminary. We don't know, in fact, if the outrage is necessary because it's all preliminary. It's a leaked document. Put that aside though, even if the document comes forward in its existing draft form, it doesn't immediately put an end to abortion in America. It returns the matter to the states to decide. It returns the matter to the forum where it should have stayed in the first place. The Constitution doesn't talk about a woman's right to abort a baby. Nothing in the Constitution about that. If you don't believe me, just read it. Read the Constitution. It will take you maybe 15 minutes. It's actually a pretty short document. It's only when politicians and attorneys and special interests get involved that the Constitution becomes cloudy and muddy and unclear. But read the original document, you won't find the word abortion or anything that can even be twisted to include abortion in the actual constitution. That being said, the left has nonetheless driven into the American consciousness that Roe v. Wade solidifies the right of women to abort on demand. Well, it doesn't. That's another leftist lie. Roe v. Wade didn't belong at the U.S. Supreme Court level. It belonged in the state legislatures. And honestly, that's why the left hates the idea of returning it to the state legislatures because legislators don't want to go on record voting for or against abortion in their state. It's a very slippery slope because they're bound to tick off a good portion of their constituents, whichever way they fall. And politicians, if anything, don't like accountability. They like to be able to walk that line. They like to be able to appease everybody of all walks of life. They like to waffle in that land where they can't be pinned down for supporting versus opposing something. A vote on an abortion screams. It screams to voters how to vote. That's one of those issues that drives people out to the polls and that threatens politicians' political careers, right? So it's a very sticky situation for politicians at the state level to deal with, which is why it got booted, really, to the U.S. Supreme Court. To the U.S. Supreme Court to rule it a privacy issue, a privacy issue, and it's a woman's privacy right to decide whether or not to abort a baby. It's privacy. It's privacy, you see. Whether somebody has a vaccine or not, and then 84 different boosters, that's not private. That's not a private medical decision. That's not a private medical matter, as the coronavirus has shown us, and the leftist exploitation of the fear of the coronavirus 
to clamp individual liberties has shown us. Vaccine passports, that's not a privacy issue, right? But aborting a life, doing away with a life, killing a life, deleting a life, private, privacy issue. So if this draft memo stays or this draft ruling stays as is, it means the states are going to have to pick up and decide for their respective states citizens whether or not abortion first is legal in that state and what limits can be placed on abortion in those states. And it's going to be political mayhem. And boy, do politicians hate mayhem. Not when it pits them as the target of that mayhem, anyhow. Now, the Democrats think that by exploiting this whole Roe v. Wade issue and making it into something it's not, claiming that if the justices try to return Roe v. Wade to the states, that it's akin to slapping women in the face, as Nancy Pelosi tried to say, or putting them in the kitchen barefoot and pregnant for the rest of their lives as the Democrats try to paint an image of that. They think that if they can make the case to their constituents that this is what Republicans have in store for them, that they're going to win in the midterms. They have no other political issue upon which to latch. And so they're going broke. They're going, they're going for broke pulling abortion out of the Supreme Court's hat and dumping it into the media to spin with all kinds of hysterical images and hyperbolic interviews, card-waving women, keep your hands off my body, my privacy, my right, my right, my right, and so forth and so on in the media. They think that this is going to win them big in the midterms. I personally think there's going to be some backlash because Americans are sick and tired of stupid Democrat ploys, but you know, maybe it'll raise them a few bucks in the meanwhile. But speaking to the legalities of the leaked memo, now that's another matter entirely. And for that, I have two excellent guests, the former assistant attorney general Victoria Tenzing, and the former U.S. Attorney Joe DeGenova. And they are here today on Bold and Blunt to discuss the Supreme Court Roe v. Wade matter and predict what they see happening coming down the line. Thank you, Joe, Victoria. Thank you so much for being on Bold and Blunt. I really appreciate your time. Delighted to be with you. We will enjoy every minute. Well, thank you for that. Um, So I wanted to start with the Supreme Court leak. What what are the legal ramifications of that as you guys see it? Well, I think the ramifications are multiple at this point. First of all, why did it happen? It's pretty obvious that someone on the court, in all likelihood a clerk, with a leftist bent working for one of the dissenters, leak this to the press. Uh, And why would somebody do that? Well, obviously they don't have any respect for the court and its processes and its history. It's profoundly important history to our culture and our Constitution. And they wanted to influence the 2022 election by generating some sort of buzz around the issue of abortion. Um, it's, It's really a despicable act by someone who should be dedicated to the law and not to subverting the law. But I think it's also important to um, note that the White House is not condemning it. And the White House is not condemning any of the demonstrations that are planned for this weekend at the homes, the residence of these justices. So um, it really shows there's, I mean, we know, and we know this, there's such a dual standard. It was terrible when the January 6th people were demonstrating because they thought the election uh, was invalid. But these people who are demonstrating against the Supreme Court are just as culpable of interfering with a government process as the people on January 6th. Pray tell, Cheryl, will that person be put in solitary confinement? 
Yeah, I, I actually, um, I think that's a really great point, one that's being really underreported. The White House is really being mum on this whole point. And I, I just wonder, why can't the court discover who this person is now? Why is it, Why does it seem to be taking so long? It, honestly, in my opinion, it doesn't seem that difficult to trace down who had access to these particular uh, pieces of paper to release to Politico in the first place. Well, I think, first of all, um, the Marshal Service is not used to doing investigations. They're used to providing security and administrative su- uh, support to the court. It really requires trained investigators to do a leak investigation. And while I think the universe of possible suspect is really quite small compared to the usual leak case, um, it needs to be done correctly. Uh, It is amazing, however, in situations like this, when you confront people in an interview, uh, how frequently uh, people will blurt out things and say things. Um, I think they should be able to find out who the leaker was. There are some suspicions floating around out there, and it, it wouldn't be fair to mention any of those names at this point. Right. But there are some clerks who have known to have been extremely critical of, of conservative justices on the court and to have written about it uh, in the past. And so I, th- I think uh, the justices really need to get on with this, and I think that relying on the marshals may not be the best way. I'm not being critical of the marshals, but this really requires trained investigators to get it done and get it done quickly. It's, it's like ha- asking a heart surgeon to perform brain surgery. I mean, they're just different disciplines. And what, do, nope. what, do, what do you guys think should happen to the guilty party? Well, I think clearly a crime was committed. Number First of all, obviously, they would be fired, and then there should be the, the person should be disbarred. But second of all, they should be prosecuted. The draft opinion is a confidential government document. Uh, It was stolen and delivered to a third party who was not entitled to receive it. So that's theft of government property. In addition, by leaking that draft to a reporter and causing the uproar that it has, the leaking, the act of leaking, it has interfered with a judicial proceeding. And so it's a violation of law under the Obstruction of Justice Act. So, and there's also a conspiracy to violate all theft of government property and obstruction uh, because it was given to another party. And it only takes two people. You don't have to indict both people when you indict a conspiracy. The reporter could be an unindicted co-conspirator. Do you think the court has now become openly politicized and we can no longer trust well, the justice? Well, it's always politicized. I right. mean, we look at the confirmation hearings. And, and here, here is the, there was a wonderful article written by Peggy Noonan about, about this, that the, it, it didn't cure the problem of abortion. People didn't accept Roe versus Wade. And I happen to be libertarian, and I don't have a problem. I, w- I, I would vote for legislation that codified um, it, anything, uh, an abortion, uh, before uh, uh, there's life. But... This, this for 50 years, this decision has just made people 50% on one side and 50% on the other. So why not go back to the state legislatures where the politics can take place, because that's what it is, rather than having nine, as the Democrats always complain, unelected justices determine the fate. Well, also, this is part of a continuum of assaults on the court. Remember, the first major assault on the court by a president of the United States in this era came from Barack Obama when he delivered his first State of the Union address with the Supreme Court sitting in front of them. He lobbed hand grenades, verbal hand grenades, at them from the podium, criticizing them uh, about Citizens United and and warning them about not rolling back Obamacare. I mean, this is really fascinating stuff. And then that continued with criticism by the majority leader Chuck Schumer on the steps of the United States Supreme Court, calling out Gorsuch and Kavanaugh by name over this very subject matter, abortion. This is what the Democrats have always wanted. They wanted to use the court as a political weapon to raise money and to seek control of the House and the Senate and the presidency for reasons of sustaining power. This is a despicable use of politics, and uh, there there just isn't any doubt about it. The Democratic Party has now gone over the edge, and the failure of the White House to object strenuously to the 
clearly the security concerns now for the justices of the Supreme Court means that they are complicit in these acts of intolerance and that they are going to bear some responsibility if something untoward happens to any but, justice or a member of his family. By the way, the Obama threat at the State of the Union after he falsely said what was in Citizens United, falsely. Yes. He, the, his, but then he threatened on, on Obamacare. And guess what? John Roberts changed his vote. And we know that to be true. Any decent lawyer can read the, his, his reasoning and then see how he went off it took a took a U turn and said, "Oh, but it's it's okay. We're gonna we're gonna approve it." And more than that, we have talked. We talked to a justice right after that happened, and people were furious yep. at Roberts. Talk, talk to the um, the twisted logic that had to go into the ruling uh, fifty years ago on Roe v. Wade in the first place. Uh, speak to, speak to that because it was a privacy um, matter. Is what they finally decided. <laughs> well. They created a, a, a right to privacy out of nothing, out of whole cloth. Um, it was a penumbra, a right that was uh, from an emanation of a penumbra from the 14th Amendment. Abortion is not mentioned in the Constitution. At the time the Constitution was adopted, abortion was illegal in every part of the then United States. And it was illegal in almost all parts of the world. The history of abortion uh, is a history of illegality. Now. Just about the time Roe v. Wade was being argued, states all over the country were beginning to liberalize and beginning to make some exceptions to permit abortion. And that's what was so sad about Harry, what Harry Blackman did when they issued Roe v. Wade. The, the, the states were beginning to deal with this, and he interrupted a political and legislative process among the states, which would have been extremely healthy and would have developed into a consensus. Instead, they imposed a solution. They created a right that didn't exist anywhere in the Constitution, certainly didn't exist under the 14th Amendment, which protects life, liberty, and property. So, I mean, the notion that abortion is somewhere implicit in the Constitution was always ludicrous. And none other than Ruth Bader Ginsburg has said repeatedly that it didn't cure the problem, but all it did was incite the divisiveness over the issue. And that they, they, the court, should have let the legislative process take its course. I just pray to God that the justices sustain their five-vote majority in this case and rule the way they did and enhance it and publish it because to, to, to now change the ruling after this disgraceful leak would be to really turn the court into nothing more than... That would be, that would that, be just it, awful. It would, I mean, be, it would, it would destroy the court. It would absolutely destroy the court. But they you know, should be digging in more than ever. They should be digging in and writing, get their opinion out though sooner rather than later would be my suggestion. But you know what? I think there's always going to be question marks, no matter which way the question, court... Question about what? There's always going to be question marks if this leak, at, at to any degree, influence the final ruling that will but come from this court. they don't change court. the vote. If, uh, if that's true. If it's to 5-4, and Robert ought to get his ass together and make it <laughs> um, then what, you know, there's no question mark. They, they did what they did. I would, if I were Roberts, even though I... I assume he's going to be opposed to it on the basis of stare decisis. He knows how poorly written and how awful Roe v. Wade is as a matter of jurisprudence. He could vote in favor with the other five, not because he supports the ruling, but, but, but he said he needs to do this in order to sustain the, the legitimacy of the court and to show that any effort to intimidate it into changing its mind cannot work. In fact, he changed his vote in order to demonstrate that it didn't work, and I think that's what he should do. Hey, Joey, he could say, I did it just like I changed my vote on Obamacare. Yes, exactly. <laughs> no big deal. Yeah, you've done it before. Why not do it this time? <laughs> There's a sorry decisive. Do, do you guys see any potential for this to sort of platform into, um, uh, uh, I, I guess, another look at gay marriage ruling that no. came out of no, the Supreme there's Court? No, relationship whatsoever. That's a Democrat talking point. Just so I'm so glad you brought it up, Gerald, because they're trying to say, well, now they're not going to let LGBTQ, TVSYZ kids go to school with other kids. There, there is nothing in that opinion. It is all the history or that affects any other issue. The, all the history of abortion and how it was not deeply rooted in the Constitution. In fact, Roe v. Wade was false. In, in fact, uh, Justice Alito, in the draft version that's been made public, goes out of his way to specifically state that not, 
nothing in the opinion should be read to indicate that any other rights that have been found to be derived from the 14th Amendment are at risk as a result of this ruling, that in fact this case is sui generis. It's about abortion and Roe v. Wade and nothing else. The Democrats, however, have already tried to make it about gay marriage and LGBTQ rights because that's what they want to do. They want it to be about that, and they'll lie about that like they do just about everything else that they argue about. No, they just want, they want to just scare people, which is what yeah, sure. they, they did during the 2020 election. Yeah, because they have nothing to fundraise on. I mean, look at their candidate in the White House. Who <laughs> look, look at the president. Um, let, let, let's just finish up by um, briefly touching on Jen Psaki's departure from the White House, which is opening the door for this woman, whom I understand is... Um, um, is is living with a member of the media. Uh, how do you guys interpret that in terms of the ability of the White House to speak truthfully to any matters and without bias? Do you think CNN will be be, be uh, more objective because she's lives with a or she's married to a CNN reporter? <laughs> I mean, the, the replacement is only taking it's like seeing one liar in the place of another one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, 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 the new uh, White House spokesperson uh, is going to bring to the podium nothing of any particular note. Um, she is a, a gay woman who is, she's a lesbian who's married to Suzanne Malvo uh, of NBC. CNN. Is it CNN? I'm uh-huh. sorry, yeah. I apologize. Yeah. CNN. And uh, they, 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 they've been living, you know, in, in marriage for some time. Uh, it's totally irrelevant. It doesn't mean anything. It brings to the table absolutely nothing. The real issue is, will the lying continue from the podium of the White House? And the answer is yes, because that's the nature of the Biden presidency. It's been lying from day one. It's been lying during the, the campaign. And um, they continue to lie. The only question is... What will happen in the Hunter Biden case? Because we're getting closer to the 2020 elections. And remember, the Hunter Biden case has already been held up once during the 2020 election because of the presidency. Uh, Any effort to hold it up a second time would, I think, be the end of any credibility that the Department of Justice has left in these cases. There's some vague rule, Cheryl. It's kind of has morphed into, well, you can't bring political uh, indictments in within so much time of an indictment, but nobody really knows what that time limit is. So it's sort of uh, honored in the breach. I, we, but but the, the, the bottom line is we expect nothing different from the new spokesperson, and that means it's going to continue to be very ugly, very bad, and very deceptive. And on that, I agree with you guys 100%. Victoria and Joe, thank you so much for your time on Bold and Blunt. Thank you for all the work you do on behalf of Liberty for America as well. I appreciate your time. Sure. Thank you very much. Crazy leftists. Crazy Democrat Party. Thank goodness for people like Joe and Victoria who can put things in a cooler head analysis for those in America who aren't insane. And yes, I'm speaking of the Democrat Party when I use the word insane, because come on, you guys, you know you're losing it. You know you're going off the rails. Where are the more moderates in the Democrat Party? Step forward, stand up, speak out. Be like a Tulsi Gabbard, maybe, or a Joe Manchin. Do something instead of letting the far left influences that have ruined the Democrat Party. Stop letting them have their way with you and put a stop to the nuttiness in the streets. I want to remind you, if you like Bold and Blunt, you can get Bold and Blunt at edify.app backslash podcasts at washingtontimes.com or wherever podcasts are available. You can also pick up a copy of my brand new book, Lockdown, The Socialist Plan to Take Away Your Freedom. It includes all the plans and plots of the Democrats, the socialists, the Marxists, the communists, the collectivists, the globalists, all their plans for America. And I tell you what, It's not looking good. We need Americans to be up and aware of what's taking place on U.S. soil right now as we speak. Thank you for listening. Tune in next time. And in the meanwhile, stay blunt, stay bold.